Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk a little about shift lenses. I'm going to talk about macro lenses, and I'm also going to give a little review of the Iowa Venus 15mm f4 uh, shift macro lens. It's a very strange lens, but uh, you know, I ended up picking it up because it seemed intriguing, so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, it seems like the airport's sending aircraft over my house every few minutes, so you're going to hear that. Unfortunately, I can't uh, avoid it. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the lens first. Here's some images while I talk about that what I've taken with the lens. I've had it for, I don't know, about eight months now, and I've been meaning to shoot a review on it for a while. It's a, it's a pretty decent lens. Uh, it's actually built doubtly. It's all metal. It's a shift lens, which is the reason why I really liked it, but this is also what they call a one-to-one -one macro lens. And I'll explain a little bit more about that um, here. But just kind of a synopsis, if you really want a wide angle shift lens for cheap, this might be the lens for you. I won't say it necessarily fits a full frame camera uh, with the shift capability, because when you do the shift, it, it actually does crop in the corners when you're doing full frame, but on a APS-C size camera, it works great. Um, if you're looking for a macro lens, I would definitely not suggest it. This is not really a good macro lens. I mean, it, it is technically macro capable, but I'll explain why it doesn't work here shortly. Um, there's, a, there's a few weirdnesses about it. It's a fully manual lens, which does bring the price down. So normally a tilt shift lens for Nikon would run $1,800 or more. Um, you know, this is like a $500 lens. Uh, so you're not gonna get the same features. Uh, one of them that I find kind of annoying, but it, it, it's okay, is that the f-stop ring doesn't have any clicks on it, and you typically grab it instead of the focus ring when you're trying to focus. So you sit there and you'll try to line up your shot and you start turning the f-stop ring. I'll show you that a little bit more uh, in detail shortly here. Um, other than that, uh, you know, the shift function is kind of a little I don't want to say janky, but I wish it was a little bit different than the way it functions now. But again, your $500 lens versus a $1,800 lens is less than a third of the price. You're going to have to make some concessions here. You can't uh, get the world. But let me explain to you what a macro lens is, I'll explain to you what a tilt shift lens is, and then I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about this particular lens. The marketing world has sort of uh, taken over the term macro and, and sort of hybridized it. it it made it, it it's not what it used to be macro is actually a, a, a defined property of a lens um, but in in the marketing world when you see a macro lens it just means it'll focus kind of close you know more than than the other lens of a similar type so i have an 8200 uh, lens and it's supposedly macro in that you can focus closer than uh you know five feet or whatever it is i can't remember um but a true macro lens, and the ones you see shots, uh, well, similar-ish to this, this isn't a true macro shot, but this is as close as I have. I don't have a macro lens, uh, really. I mean, I guess technically I have this one now, but um, basically, if we're talking in the world of film, it's a little easier to describe, but if you were to take a, like a, a picture of a, of a, like a fly, and you had a one-to-one -one macro lens, basically what you do is that if you were to take the picture of the fly and then you were to develop the film and you take the film, the negative out, and you were to take the fly and you put it on the negative, they're the same size. It'd be one-to-one -one size. Now a two-to-one macro is uh, the, the fly on the negative would be half the size of the actual fly if you were to put the fly on the negative. Um, and, and that's where the macro, a true macro starts. It's a two-to-one macro then you have one-to-one -one macros, and then you have a 0.5-to-one macro, or half macro, which means that it'd be the opposite. You'd take the fly, and, it, and the fly on the negative would be twice the size of the fly in real life. Now, those may not sound very big when you have a little negative, but when you blow it up, then you realize that you're, you have a really close-in focus of a, of a fly. Um, so macro photography, typically people take pictures of insects or flowers, um, you know, the, the macro world, and you kind of get a, a whole new perspective on things. And it's really interesting, and some people really geek out on it and really love it. Um, now, now getting to why this lens is technically a macro but is terrible at it, uh, let me explain why. This is a 15 millimeter lens, which means it's a very wide angle lens. Um, 
if you were to focus one to one, so whenever you have a wider angle lens, things appear to be farther away. So if you take a picture of uh, uh, you know somebody that's like this far away, it appears to be like three or four times further away than it actually is. In this camera, you actually have to focus so close to get to achieve the one-to-one -one macro that you're actually inside the plane of of the uh, of the lens uh, bezel here. So you're actually inside of it, which means that light doesn't get to the front of the subject. So you're taking a picture of you know a bug or whatever, and if you're at one-to-one, -one, you're so close to the lens that you're just going to get a silhouette. The only time you can achieve a nicely lit one-to-one. -one macro photo is if the subject is translucent, means light can go through them, because there's no way to light the subject from the front. Uh, if you're really interested in one-to-one -one bug silhouettes, then this lens is great for macro photography. But uh, most people don't want silhouettes. Most of the people want the detail of the eyes and the face of a bug and all that stuff, a spider, and you're just not gonna get it with this lens. I've tried putting a, a ring light adapter on it. You can see here, not only does, uh, <laughs> it doesn't light the front of the subject, but you start seeing the ring, ring light adapter around it, which kinda is a neat effect. Uh, it's just because it's such a wide angle lens. Uh, the, the mark, the producer, the manufacturer of this lens says, oh, you know, so you can take one-to-one -one macros and still have, you know, a wide angle lens so you can see the background. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. Um, but I knew that when I bought the lens and I was like, you know what, this is kind of funny that they say it's a one-to-one -one macro and it's kind of fun to play with a little bit, but like I said, you're just not going to get good photos with it. Um, the, the reason I liked it was two because it's wide angle 15 millimeter so I thought it'd be great for uh, Milky Way photography and the shift function which is this and I'll talk a little bit about that here shortly uh, or actually right now so uh, in the olden days of photography uh, you had those old style cameras where people put the hood over the thing and they had the bellows you know so the lens sticked out and and there's like paper bellows that went to the lens um, that photography, those cameras actually have a still useful function today. And, and that's because you can move the lens. So if you have your, your, your film plane here, like the back of the camera here, and you have your lens out here, you can move that all around relative to this plane. You'd think you want to keep them perfectly parallel, but there are some advantages to having, to moving it around. One of those is what they call the shift. So, uh, and that's really handy in architecture photography. Uh, it was used extensively, oh, quite often back then for, for that. And, and when you're taking per, uh, pictures of buildings, you know, because whenever you, you, you look upwards to take a picture of the building, the building kind of tapers um, toward the, uh, as you go to the top of it. And architects didn't like that. They wanted to show their building perfectly square, you know, because like that's the way the building is. It's square. I want it to look square. When you take pictures of it, I want it to come out square. The way you do that, actually, it's kind of funky, is you, if you listen to film plane again, and this is the lens, you actually shift the, the lens upwards. And what that happens is you have a building that would be normally tilted like this, suddenly stands up straight. So here's a few examples of that using this, this lens here. So you can see the building's tilted, and then it kind of stands up straight. Um, and it's, it's just a funky way that happens. Now again, on a full frame camera, you'll start getting uh, some cropping in the upper corners, such as this. Uh, but for the APS-C size cameras, it works fine. So, you know, give it a try. I, I enjoyed it. I, uh, I, that's the reason I bought it, because I like to do some um, architectural photography and I like to, you know, want the, the things to stand up. I've been dreaming of getting a shift lens for a while, but 1800 bucks and, you know, it's kind of hard for me to swallow. Uh, the other advantage is this is 15 millimeters. Most of the architectural ones are like 28 millimeters, I think, is the smallest. And then I think they get up to uh, 60 millimeters. There's just two that Nikon offers. I'm sure Canon has their line. And then there's some other brands that offer some as well. Um, some very expensive cameras uh, or lenses offer some as well. Um, now, now you might be wondering a tilt shift versus just a shift. Uh, now the tilting portion is you're able to angle the lens relative to the back. 
And the advantage of that, so normally when you're focusing on something, you have the focus plane. So you have like, you know, the camera, and then you have your subject, and then there's a certain uh, a plane of focus that's going to be, you know, however thick the depth of field is. Now, with the tilt lens, if you tilt the lens, you're actually able to tilt your plane of focus, which is pretty handy uh, sometimes. Um, if you, for instance, you were taking a picture of a line of shoes and they're going down at an angle and, you're, and you have to like be at an angle to take a picture, see all of them, you can actually then tilt the lens and get all the shoes in focus versus just getting like one in focus. That's pretty handy. Some people go crazy and they do something called this tilt shift photography stuff. It makes look like, you know, normal scenes look like they're in a miniature model. Uh, that's a Photoshop thing. I don't think you can do that with an actual lens. I've never tried. I'm not really that interested in. I mean, it's kind of a neat effect at times. I think uh, people have applied it very effectively. And sometimes I think it's just, you know, it's, it's neat looking, but... Um, yeah, it's very, uh, you know, it's more of a gimmick and I'm not so much into it, but that's my opinion and I don't want you to feel like if you're into it that it degrades it. It's cool. There's a lot of people that are into it. You know, keep doing it. And I'm not saying don't do it. It's just not for me. Um, so uh, this one just focuses on just the shift fo uh, a portion of that. It doesn't do the tilt portion, which I'm completely happy with. I don't foresee using tilt functions in the future or in my general photography anyways. Um, now getting back to this particular lens, um, you know, I kind of went over a summary. I like it to some degree. It's $500. It's not necessarily a lens that everybody's going to want to buy. I'm glad to see that they're still on the market. I'm not sure how much longer this lens will be on the market because I don't know how popular they are. Here's some close-ups of the lens itself. You can see, um, now, now I mentioned that the f-stop ring does not have clicks, which means that it just it's moves as smoothly as the focus ring. So when you're adjusting the f-stop, it there's no like click, 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 click. You can it has almost an infinite number of adjustments between four and thirty-two. Um, again, I kind of find that really annoying where the location is. I would have rather have had it behind the f-stop or the focus ring, because I typically will grab uh, the first ring and start adjusting for focus and that's just habit because all my other lenses have always had the f-stop the ring in the back. Um, the focus is fine. I mean it's very smooth. Again this thing is a metal body. It's a, it's a fairly heavy robust lens. It comes with this lens cover which is kind of nice. Um, it's definitely handy to have. I like having the 15 millimeter fixed lens. I'm not a big fan of fixed lenses but uh, you know 15 millimeters is a great size for me. I do like kind of the wider angle. It's a very square lens, so you'll see that in these photos here, it doesn't. There's not a lot of barrel distortion. Everything's very what they call rectilinear, which means everything's straight up and down versus barrel distortion. Here's an example of barrel distortion on a 10.5 millimeter Nikon lens. I have used this for some night photography, and I've gotten some pretty decent results. Um, I don't know if I was getting some weird color shifts or not, but I ended up switching from my 15 millimeter to the uh, my 14 to 24 millimeter, and I seem to be getting a little bit better results uh, for night photography. So if you like doing some architectural photography, you also want to do some Milky Way photography, and you like having the shift function, and you have $500 to invest in a lens, I would consider getting this one. Um, it's it's kind of a niche market, but um, but it's it is well worth it. It is a, like some people might be a little annoyed working in manual mode because you have to work in manual mode in order to, to for this lens to work. But again, I think it's it's well worth it. All right, I think that pretty much covers everything that I want to talk about as far as the lens, um, what shift lenses are what macro lenses are. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. I would say my average response time is somewhere between a couple days to a week or two. Sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little shorter. It just when I can get to it, I'm sorry. Um, I'll try to put some links up here to some of my other photography uh, videos if you're interested. Um, and I'll have some links down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're interested in more. Uh, also, if you have any other ideas for videos, 
please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to see if I can make a video about it or at least wrap it into uh, one video with a bunch of different, covering a bunch of different topics. So again, thank you. I hope this video was informative and uh, take care.